guys. Um, here we're looking at the assembled upper right hand side of the X gantry. This is the mostly assembled left and we'll get to this in a minute. Um, this little update uh, shows this was that rigid ink blue PLA. Um, I made in the design um, allotment for four M3 screws and nuts to go into that. I don't know if this is going to focus there. Hopefully it will. Um, my preview window is quite small, so I'm hoping <laughs> what you guys are seeing is in focus. Um, just trying a new camera rig too. Um, it's it's really quite stiff. Like it's almost as stiff as is uh, the integral one. If you can see, this is part of how this print because this was printed on a Fabricator Mini, so you've only got a certain amount of build volume. So this prints flat on the bed like this. So that's why you can see the print lines run this way. This one is printed on the bed there, so the print lines run like this. Um, didn't really make that much of a difference, but it's strong enough that all I needed was two. Let's see if we can see in here. See that little screw down on the bottom there? And then there should be one here. Let's see if that's going to get any focus. I don't know. Um, but yeah, two M3 screws. And the nuts go on top because it's easier for me to put the socket on top. And then... I made these holes down here big enough for a screwdriver that I have to get through. Um, and yeah, so then I put uh, the star pattern uh, PLA bushings in. Now there's no silicone on these yet. Silicone is kind of the magic lubricant, but I don't want to get my, well, I'm still working on the rods. I don't want to get them dirty just yet. But even without the silicone, um, you'll see here in a second, I'm just going to put this eight millimeter rod. Now this is a rod salvaged from a printer. And I'm just going to apologize right now, the sound of the, that uh, plane flying by. It's warm enough right now that up here i got to have that window behind me open. So you're going to hear the odd car or plane or whatever go by. But uh, I know it's hard to see this here, but it moves really well. You can hear a tiny little bit of click. And that tiny little bit of click is only in the bushing. The bottom bushing is perfect, and the top bushing, but this slides really good. I mean, this has less wiggle, and I know you guys can't can't really see it on camera, but it has less wiggle than um, the old bearing ones that I used to have, the uh, ball bearing ones. They always have a tiny little bit of slop in them. Um, there's almost nothing. In fact, this one might not even really need too much lubricant. It doesn't move um, terribly perfectly, like it's... It, will go but there's a little bit of an inertia to get it to go but now when I put silicone on this and then work it into the PLA bearings that'll go um, there's something that I don't know if we can see this on camera here if it'll focus focus you can see in the crack in the, in the expansion gap that's used to flex to hold the bushings the bushings themselves have a side that's like a seam from where the printer goes around and it prints in circles and meets at one point what I like to do because that seam is usually pretty puffy. I like to line the seams up with the gap in the bushing holder. And uh, it just seems to fit better. Uh, and the alignment is perfect. Like, I mean, this is uh, awesome. Now, one thing I did mention, these star pattern ones, these star pattern bushings, the ones that have that shape, they like to spin like this more than they like to run like this. The running is all right, but they spin much better. Um, now, the other thing I covered quickly in the other video, and I have a defective one here. Um, yeah, because I printed it. <laughs> the hole was too small. This was one of the earlier prototypes of the um, the thing that's going to mount these 8mm rods uh, for the lower bed. Um, this one's defective, so we're not going to worry about him. The hole actually came out to 6mm. Um, and, uh, yeah, that was no good. And there was not enough room... There wasn't enough room in this spot here. See if this will focus here for us. There wasn't enough room in that gap right there for that to close. So, um, yeah. This was a defect. But it did show that the uh, this low, uh, I guess it would be a low clearance on the top. So if the printer bed could be much lower, allowing me to use smaller uh, pillow blocks for the actual print bed. Uh, to clear it when it's on the 8mm rod, but this is essentially everything else is the right is the same shape. 
Um, these are going to go down onto a block that's going to allow me a little bit of uh, left to right adjustment to keep the, the, the rails straight for the print bed. Um, but that was just a side note. Let's get back to this here. Um, so yeah, the, these bushings just push in there. The top one is awesome because the lines, let's see if this will focus again. There we go. The print lines are um, horizontal like this, and that's the same way that the lines on the bushing are printed. So when you push the bushing in, the outside of the bushing grabs a good friction fit with this. The bottom one, not so much because you can see the print lines go like this. So I made two little dimples here so I can put a zip tie on here after if I need to, to hold it. But the friction fit has been quite good still because there's a little bit of roughness inside and that grabs the outside of the PLA bushing. But the smoothness, I mean, this is smooth. You guys can't tell on camera, but it's smooth. And I don't even think you guys can hear it. I'm just going to shut up and do this for a minute close to the camera. I don't know if you guys could hear that, but... Um, yeah, that's, that's almost silent, right? So that's got to be a benefit. Now, this is the motor side and something interesting here. I'm not sure what I did, but I messed up printing this upper bushing and it's the different pattern. It's the, let me just pull the, right there. See how it's kind of like the flower pattern. See if this will focus here. Um, I guess it was supposed to be like suspended this bushing was printed a long time ago and it's actually too small to fit in this for some reason the outside diameter shrunk on this one when I was making this um, not sure why but that's the only one that I had that I made a mistake in this one so I chucked it aside when I was making the bushings in PLA and trying the different profiles I printed a bunch of little uh, segments of them for sizing and whatnot because you know different printers, different sizing, shrinkages and whatnot. And I ended up with um, a little one, if you can see here. A little focus here for us. Focus. Come on. Focus. Um, he's on focus. He's only about a quarter inch. Yeah, about a quarter of an inch. Um, and I just put it up in the top there. And of course it grips because of the way it was printed. Uh, just to see how this would go. And funny enough, even though it's got a full size, perfectly good bushing down there, that small bushing up top um, still holds this. There's there's no play. This this has nothing. This that has a tiniest little feel of of play. This one has none. Smooth, very smooth. Oh, that's the wire of the stepper motor moving on the counter. But it's very smooth. A little bit of sound because it's a fresh bushing on the end. It hasn't been in contact with much or been polished yet. But when I get the silicone on this. It's going to move like glass. It's going to be like oil on glass. Um, now, obviously, the, uh, the way that this goes together, you got to have something for the, uh, the X carriage to run in. So I've got a little piece of my L channel sitting over here. And the L channel fits down into these. Now I haven't printed the um, the thing that we go on the back here that we cap these in is the idler pulley and I've got to print that but I'll probably do that tonight um, but the L channel aluminum just goes right in there. Now these came out for whatever reason um, the dimensioning or, or the uh, tolerance that I put in um, this is a little bit too loose so I'm going to put a couple drops of glue in here later let it harden and then file it file it out a bit or, or such just to get a bit more friction on this because it shouldn't be shouldn't be that slippy <laughs> but what you would then do is you have your other side hopefully this is in frame here because I can't look at the camera and do this at the same time so you'd have essentially a very very short x-axis here these would be as wide as your printer would need to be you just cut this aluminum to whatever distance out here you want but you'd have that like that there would be another one of these um, L channels here, so that essentially, oops, try not to whack the camera. This would be your Y axis coming up here, and then super tiny for the purpose of this shot, but that's your X stage, and the belt will run in here. Um, 
I've already checked it clears, and of course I keep whacking the camera, sorry, with the, uh, with the top of the, with the, the, oh, look at that, look how easy that moves. Sorry, I just had to, I haven't done that yet, that was pretty good. <laughs> that one's moving really easy. So, anyhow, um, that's kind of the, the little update there, and how that's going. So I just got to figure out the size to cut. Um, figure out what size I need to cut that aluminum L channel too to get the best uh, to get the best fit for the board. Now I got the piece of wood downstairs and it's nice outside, so I'm probably going to cut that today. I might not do that on on video, but I will cut it. Um, this mount here, some of you might see or recognize from earlier attempts at this. Um, that's getting replaced. There's a, a mount that has an integral holder for these uh, Y vertical rods. That's nothing, it's just a little mount. But this threaded rod actually passes up through this hole and there's a little keeper here that has a little thing that bolts on here and that's what's going to set the, uh, the, I guess that would be the uh, Z-axis height, sorry. Oh, that, that little feller popped out. Well, that's how easy they go in. So this will probably need a little zip tie. So we'll just take, I'll just do this now, see if I got one long enough up here. You just take a little zip tie like this. <laughs> that peel is some slippy. There we go. And that'll put some clamping force on that and that'll stop that bushing from coming out and then you would just trim that and that's all you would do down here at the bottoms you would put a, a zip tie past those little I don't know if you guys saw that but you would put the um, zip tie on the bottom to hold the bottom one in so that's where this part of it's done I'm gonna try and like I said cut the uh, the main frame and that um, downstairs now. Uh, it's nice outside, so I'll try and get that done. But anyhow, uh, a little bit long-winded again. Hopefully a lot better video than the last one. And it's a little easier to see it when you see the real plastic. So um, today I'm going to try and print uh, what I came up with for the uh, idler pulley, the tensioner side. I'm going to try and print the, um, the things that are going to hold the z-axis on. And uh, then I'm going to try and get that all done tonight. Hopefully, like I said, I'm going to get out there, cut that wood, and that'll go well. We'll see. And uh, as I mentioned uh, to a couple people already, the thing that's got me the most concerned at the moment is cutting the uh, the glass. I got a flatbed scanner. Got a, two flatbed scanners that had that nice big sheet of optical glass in it. It's kind of thick. And I suck at cutting glass, so I'm going to see if there's somebody here locally that um, can cut glass well, if somebody's got some tips for cutting glass. Um, I mean, I can go to the dollar store and just get a picture frame that has the 8 by uh, 7 or whatever uh, little piece of glass and just use that until then. But I'd prefer to just have that nice big thick piece of uh, tempered glass. I think it's tempered. I have no idea. But anyhow, that, that'll probably be another video when we get there. Anyway, so... This is how the um, that x-axis gantry is going to go on these, and I just need to make the top and bottoms today. And once I get them printing, I'm going to go out and try and cut that piece of wood for the mainframe. So anyhow, if you have any questions or comments, uh, put them down below. Don't forget to like and uh, subscribe if you like this kind of crazy projects, or if you just want to see how this turns out, this experiment with using L channel. Um, yep. Uh, subscribe that way you'll be up to date with my craziness and uh, as always thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video